The Sonic movie franchise is gearing up for a sequel, and fans and critics are hoping for it to be everything the first movie wasn't. Sonic 1 infamously had a rough start, but it still did very well at the box office. And between comparing it to the Marvel Universe and speculating how Tails will make an entry in the sequel, there have been fewer red alerts going off about who else is likely to be introduced into the Sonic franchise. I'm looking at Knuckles, the blazing red antagonist to the blue blur. For those of you who might not know, Knuckles was a staple in the Sonic video games. He first appeared in Sega's Sonic 3 with powerful combat skills and dangerously spiked hands. Knuckles also arrived alongside Sega's lock-on technology, which back then spruced up the gameplay big time by essentially allowing users to merge elements of two games. May not seem big now, but this was in the 90s. In the present day and age, there's a very real possibility of Knuckles making his live-action debut, and there are a variety of scenarios which could accommodate and even benefit from his entry. Let's jump right in and take a quick look at why and how Knuckles will be in Sonic 2. Either Sonic gives us that emerald or I'm going to take it from him. After facing severe backlash over the first design of Sonic, Paramount Studios revamped the character and came back in good grace with the audience. Since then, they have remained faithful to the video game when it comes to the look and feel of the characters, so we don't have to look far beyond the game's own narrative to curate a hint or two about which characters the movie will introduce next. If you look up his bio, you'll find that Knuckles is a humanized echidna. Now go all the way back to the opening scene of the first movie. Sonic had been told to keep his super-fast powers hidden or there would be dire consequences. He obviously failed and was ambushed along with Longclaw by an arrow-wielding tribe of supposed bad guys. You might have already picked up on where I'm going with this. These vicious tribesmen were none other than a bunch of echidnas. This is a significant easter egg as the video games have already established Knuckles as the occasional foe who goes up against Sonic and Tails. It's pretty clear that there's some bad blood between them and this would be a solid premise for the sequel to explore. Movie adaptations are a tricky business, especially when they cater to a large fan base of an already visualized set of characters. The creators of the Sonic movie set a good example by responding positively to early criticism, and this carefulness might have also reflected in the way they set up the film. Director Jeff Fowler claimed, and I quote, that they were just trying to keep it simple. The first movie's main concern was to stay true to the 1991 game and set up the main rivalry between Sonic and Robotnik. So it looks like Sonic 1 just wasn't the right space to bring in too many characters and someone as significant as Knuckles would have to wait for the right time to be introduced. Sonic the Hedgehog made a record-breaking opening in theaters and will be remembered as one of the top blockbusters of 2020. It is likely to hold its position for a while now, at least until Christopher Nolan's Tenet makes it to theaters. We don't know how the franchise will evolve and expand, but it is clear that the makers are very close to the source material. Not only does this explain why Knuckles still hasn't seen his share of live-action screen time, but it signals his imminent arrival. One reason why everyone is so looking forward to seeing him in the sequel is because his late introduction to the franchise more or less aligns with the way he also came into the games a little bit later. Knuckles was introduced as an antagonist in Sonic Cannon, but he also represents the famous foe-turned-friend trope in the gaming franchise. Sonic and Knuckles initially didn't see eye to eye, but there was a deeper reason behind their animosity. The ominous Eggman, aka Dr. Robotnik, had once become an ally of Knuckles, but only to deceive him for the Master Emerald. Knuckles never trusted him again and teamed up with Sonic and Tails to bring Robotnik down. Robotnik had tricked Knuckles into going against Sonic, and Knuckles was quite gullible having taken the bait. This scenario fits in perfectly with the larger theme of Sonic and his friends defeating Dr. Robotnik and makes it all the more alluring to introduce Knuckles in the sequel to build up towards this situation. 
Sonic may have banished Dr. Robotnik to the Mushroom Planet at the end of the first movie, but his struggles are far from over. The film never really told us what became of the echidnas who attacked Sonic and Longclaw, and that makes it the biggest hint on this list. We've already established that Knuckles is an echidna, and the sequel could very well set up his arrival on Earth as a representative of his tribe. He could be the echidna that traces Sonic back to Earth to finish his tribe's incomplete task. This itself is not big news, but it potentially connects the dots of Sonic meeting his future best friend in the movie. Sonic has yearned for companionship all his life, and now that we expect Tails to be in the sequel, warning the blue blur of a threat to his life makes the perfect reason to ease him into the sequel. This would lay the foundation of their friendship and pretty much ties up the loose ends in the storyline left by the first movie. And what's a sequel for if not tying up loose ends? Clearly, I'm not going to be able to do this on my own. Well, that brings an end to my time with you. Thanks for watching the video.